if you have charges like electrons, 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 with a force which is enormous. Hey there, welcome to the Electronics Lab. In this video, we're going to look at capacitance. What we're looking at here is an animation from the fantastic website FET from the University of Colorado in Boulder, I believe. I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check out all of the different animations that FET offers. And specifically what we're looking at here is an animation that explores capacitance. And we see over on the left hand side is a battery with a variable voltage connected through a switch which is currently open to these two conductive parallel plates that are separated by air. There's an air gap between them. So let's go through a bit of an experiment. I'm going to crank the voltage up to one and a half volts here on, from the battery, and then I'm going to close the switch and let's see what happens. Well, you'll note that these arrows showed up at the top and the bottom to indicate the direction of current flow, or at least direction of electron flow. And then you'll see that all of these negative charges built up on the bottom plate and all of these positive charges built up on the top plate. The bottom plate's connected to the negative lead of the battery and the top plate's connected to the positive lead of the battery. So that makes sense that you've got negative on the bottom, positive on the top. And basically what happened when I closed the switch is electrons flowed onto this plate here and then pushed electrons from the top plate back to the battery. And now look what happens when I open the switch. Those charges stay on the plates. They don't disappear, they don't go anywhere. And so what we can see from this animated experiment is when you have a pair of conductors, like these two plates that are separated by an insulator, this air gap in between them, that pair of conductors has the capacity to store charge and this ability to store charge is called capacitance. Now let's take a closer look and refine this idea of capacitance. Okay, I'm gonna put this back to zero and then close the switch again. We'll see that charges go away. If they go away instantaneously in this animation, but then in reality, they would slowly go away or not slowly, they would over time go away. And that time's gonna depend on how much, how big these plates are, how much capacitance we have here. Okay, now look what happens as I go over to this battery and I start increasing the voltage. So I turn it up a little bit, leave it there. I've got a few charges, turn it up a little bit more and you can see some more negative charges go to the bottom plate and positive charges to the top plate. And the more voltage that I apply, the more charges get pushed onto the plates. So what it looks like is a higher voltage leads to more charge. And in fact, experiments have shown that there's a linear relationship between voltage and the amount of charge that can be pushed onto a capacitor or into par parallel plates like this. And, and the constant of proportionality is the capacitance. And that relates the amount of charge that can be pushed onto a capacitor per voltage that's pushing the charge. And more specifically, this capacitance is charge per volt. Or in, in the abbreviation, capacitance is C, charge is Q, and voltage is V. We get C equals Q over V. Or to think of it in terms of charge, Q equals C times V. So what that's telling us is the amount of charge stored depends on how much push there is to get the charge onto the capacitor, and that push is the voltage. And it also depends on what the capacitance of the parallel plates or those separated conductors is. Kind of kind of like how much space there is for the charges to go into. The units of capacitance are farads. And a one farad capacitor can store one coulomb of charge per volt applied to it. Now, anytime you have conductors separated by an insulator, you will have a capacitance. That's what we just talked about. But a capacitor is a device that is specifically designed to have a certain amount of capacitance. Now let's think about what purpose these charge storage devices, these capacitors have. What we're looking at now is an enhancement of the capacitor animation. And we have the battery still on the left and we have the parallel plate capacitor in the middle. And then on the right hand side, we have this light bulb. So let's start by charging that capacitor. Get it to fully charged open it up and you can see those charges are still stored on the capacitor. And now let's flip the switch over to the light bulb. So the charges that were stored on the capacitor now have somewhere to go. The negatives are all going to flow to the bottom through the light bulb and back to the and to fill the positive on the other side of the capacitor. So basically those stored charges were storing energy. And when I make a connection between the bottom plate and the top plate through that light bulb there, 
all of the energy gets released through the bulb. It doesn't happen instantaneously, but it just happens over time. And it depends on how much current can be drawn through the light bulb to get the charges going from the bottom plate to the top plate. So fundamentally, capacitors are energy storage devices. And so capacitors are used for all sorts of applications where energy storage is needed in some way. And some specific applications are battery replacements because they can store a significant amount of energy. Not necessarily as much as a battery, but still a significant amount. They can be used for power supply filtering so they can they can absorb and release small amounts of energy as, as you get, say, voltage ripple on a power supply. They can be used for circuit decoupling, so blocking the effects of one part of a circuit from another. And they can be used for signal filtering. Capacitors are typically found in sizes ranging from picofarads, that's 10 to the minus 12 farads, to microfarads at 10 to the minus 6 farads. But they can be in the order of farads or tens or even hundreds of farads for larger energy storage devices, like as, a, as battery replacements. They are not perfect replacements for batteries because capacitors can't store quite the same amount of energy as a battery does. But the advantage that they do have is they're capable of delivering that energy very, very quickly. Unlike batteries, which have a chemical process that they need to go through to create the current, capacitors just have a charge there that's ready to flow. And so when you make a connection to the circuit, that energy is available for use right away. So that was just a quick intro to the idea of capacitance and capacitors. And so now at the end of this, you should have an idea of what capacitance is, the units used for capacitance, as well as some uses for capacitors. So as always, Thank you very much for listening. See you next time.